Hey guys, Ray here, welcome to the channel. I like to build fun projects with solar power and batteries, but today we are setting up this Wi-Fi dongle. Now, this is connected to my 6000 XP, but it also connects to a bunch of other inverters like the 18K, maybe others in the future. So this tutorial should work for both of those. So we're just gonna go through this slowly, one step at a time, but let's go ahead and get started. Keep things extra clear, I'm gonna go a little bit slow. So if I'm going too slow, feel free to play this on double speed. Okay, so if you're gonna to wanna to monitor your system and configure it like we're gonna do in this video, you're gonna to wanna to first create a monitoring account. So we're gonna go over to my computer, we'll set up the monitoring account and then we'll go to the next step. So we're gonna type this URL in the browser, https colon forward slash forward slash monitor dot eg4 electronics dot com. And I'm just gonna put this URL in. Now here we can, we don't have a username and password, so we're gonna go ahead and register this. Now this is optional if you want your inverter to be connected to the internet. Now there is another option if you're worried about you know, security reasons and you don't want your system connected to the internet at all, you can set up a local connect, which I'll show you here in a minute, but this is for uh, connecting it to the internet. And this is really nice. I like this a lot. So basically you need to fill out these fields. So you can put your username, password, uh, email address. You can put a station name if you have multiple stations. Indicate whether you're, you are currently on daylight savings time Okay, so anyways, time zone. This one's a little bit tricky. This, this field might change in the future, but right now it is relative to Greenwich time, so, or GMT time. Now, GMT time is kind of a standard time that astronomers use, um, programmers use this sometimes, but so let's look at what time it is for me according to GMT time. So I'm, I am currently in Utah, so I, I'm on mountain time. So if I just, I just Googled uh, mountain time to GMT time and uh, Greenwich mean time or GMT time is six hours ahead of mountain time. So that means I am six hours behind uh, Greenwich time. So I'm six hours behind. So in this field, I'm just gonna select GMT minus six. There we go. Now the customer code. Uh, you don't need to call Signature Solar and sit on hold to get this code. I'm gonna tell it to you right now. So the code is, is Signature. Or if you bought your device from Current Connected, the code is Current Connected. And pay attention to the caps. So capital C, uh, capital C for connected with a space in between. Now this will allow them to troubleshoot your system. If you have problems with it, you can call them and they can log in and see the, lo the error logs on your system. They can help troubleshoot it. Uh, or if you have another uh, distributor that you're going through, you'll have to call them to get the customer code that they have. So that's the, what that is. So, and then you enter your dongle S uh, serial number and the dongle pin. Now this should be on the side of your dongle, the physical device. And uh, yeah, the serial number is on this, the side of the physical device and also the pin is on the side. So then you just click register and it'll allow you to log in. So once you sign in, you shouldn't see any information on that web page initially. And that is because this little device isn't connected to the internet. So once it's connected to the internet, it'll send data up into your account and you can log onto that web page and see the data, which we're gonna see in just a minute. Also, if you have multiple Wi-Fi dongles, you need to only set up one at a time. So unplug the other ones and plug one in at a time and set them up. Thank you, Brandon, for that little tip. So let's go ahead and set this up so it can connect to your Wi-Fi internet. That's the most common scenario. Now on Signature Solar's website, they do have a hardwired option. So if you have like a plug where you connect your internet in with an ethernet cable, they have an option where you can uh, use an ethernet cable. I think it might be labeled just for the uh, 
18K, but it also works for the 6000 XP. Now they also, now if you don't even have internet at your house, say you just use your phone for your internet, they do have another hardware device on Signature Solar's website that is preloaded with like, I think it's like five years of cell phone data. So it has a, SIM, a cell phone SIM card in there. You plug it in and it'll connect to the local cell phone tower. And that's how it'll send the data to the internet. So you can still monitor on your app. But this is the most common scenario where you're gonna be connecting it to the Wi-Fi router that you have up in your house. So that's what we're gonna go through right now. So the first step to connect the dongle to the internet is to download the app in your app store. So I'm just gonna type in uh, EG4 monitor. So I have an Android, but if you have an Apple, just go to your uh, Apple store and look for EG4 monitor, install that. And then, so I'm gonna open it right now. So it opens up. So don't put your username and password in yet. So remember the goal here for this step is to get this device to connect to the internet. So I need to get this device to connect to my local Wi-Fi router. So on my Wi-Fi router, I have an antenna that my phone connects to that Wi-Fi router's antenna and that Wi-Fi router then connects to the internet. Now this also has a Wi-Fi antenna. So we're gonna use my phone and I'm going to first disconnect the Wi-Fi from my local internet here. And I'm going to connect it to this Wi-Fi antenna. Then I'm gonna be able to set this up a little bit. So we'll jump into that here. So hang with me. I'm gonna show you on my phone how I'm gonna do this. So here we are. So here's my Wi-Fi. Right now I'm connected to my internet. My internet is labeled, don't steal my internet. So I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect from this. I'm gonna to go to the settings. I'm gonna say, don't auto reconnect. Okay. So then I'm going to go and connect to this, the second one down. And that is the serial number, the BJ34. Uh, that is the serial number on the side of my Wi-Fi dongle. So I'm gonna to connect to this instead. So my phone's not going to want to connect to it because it doesn't have internet. It'll want to go back to my other one inside my house that's labeled don't steal my internet. So the important thing that I needed to do to get it working for me is I needed to go into don't steal my internet and I wanted to make sure it didn't auto reconnect because it was reconnecting me back to my uh, working Wi-Fi router. There we go. So I am connected to the Wi-Fi dongle antenna right now. After I'm connected to the Wi-Fi dongle, I'm going to open up the app, EG4 monitoring app. Now, if you look at the buttons on the bottom, I'm going, I'm not gonna put my username and password here. I'm just gonna to wanna to select dongle connect at the bottom here. So when you hit dongle connect, this is where you're gonna select your Wi-Fi in your house. So here's my Wi-Fi, don't steal my internet. If you click this yellow button, it could refresh with the different Wi-Fi uh, antennas that are in your area. So select the one, your local Wi-Fi and then put your password in and then click Home Connect. And then you're set. Now after you click that, your uh, dongle should reset and then these three lights should turn green Give it a little bit, but they should turn green and that'll tell you that this is connected to your Wi-Fi router and it's connected to the internet. It should be sending data up into uh, the servers so you can view it on the website and on your phone. Now, if you don't want it to connect to the internet, you can just, on page 41 of the manual, you can just follow these instructions to connect with Bluetooth to the inverter. Okay, let's go ahead and look at the app. Before you log in and open the app, you want to reconnect your phone to your regular internet router or Wi-Fi service. And then you'll be able to see this information anywhere in the world. So I've had this running for a while, so I have a little bit of data collected over time. But 
instead of, so I'm just going to log in at the top here. And it shows me all my data. I'm not going to go through every single point here, but you notice I'm getting almost 3,000 watts of solar. My house is currently using about 1,000 watts, and I'm charging my battery with 1,600 watts. If you click on some of these items at the top if you want to toggle through them. Okay, so that's the basic screen. I think believe this is actively being worked on, so they may change this, update it, add more functionality, which is nice. I noticed one problem that I'm seeing is I currently have two batteries in parallel and they have closed loop communication, but uh, it's showing the number of batteries in parallel zero. So I'm not sure what the issue is there. But if you go to the next tab here, data, here's all my graphs. This is pretty neat. You can feel free to look at that. Here's any event logs or error logs that have come. And then here uh, at the top, you just, if you select read all at the top, that'll populate the data. And this is what I have set for mine in my charge settings. I have my AC charge settings set to um, the battery state of charge. So I can have this set, I can have this set on voltage if I want, but I have communication with the battery. So I know what the battery state of charge is. Uh, select battery state of charge and a whole bunch of settings in here. So if, if power is going to start getting really expensive in your area, say in California, I think it's like five o'clock, maybe four o'clock power starts getting really expensive. So you could say, Hey, I want to charge my batteries off right before that time. So you can add specific times you want to start charging. I don't have any of that set, but I do have at the very bottom here, I do have it where if it ever gets to 20%, I'm going to want to charge it with AC up to 30%. But I'm not going to have it charge all the way to 100% because who knows, the sun might be just about to come out and then I want to take advantage of any solar I have to charge the battery. Let's see, let me go to discharge settings. But there's a whole bunch of other settings you can set in here. And if I log on to the website, I'm currently seeing a lot of the same data that's on the phone. Uh, here I can see the BMS, some of the BMS data. So right now the battery BMS doesn't want to be charged more than 100 amps. And there's all the data coming in here. Some more graphs. There's a bunch of tabs here at the top. You can feel free to mess around here. I'm just going to go to the last tab. This is where you can set things. So you can see none of this is populated. So you need to select your device here and then read all of the data and it will populate these fields. And there we go. It looks like they were populated and mainly, yeah, just a lot of the same settings that were um, there before. Discharge settings, charge settings, reset everything to def default. But also let me know what some of your favorite settings are here. I'm still trying to look at this app, see kind of the things I really like. But as a reward for watching to the end of the video, I do have a discount code, Ray, that you can use at Signature Solar. If you're interested in solar panels, the solar array I have out back, they're $85 a piece for 325 watt panels from Santan Solar. I have a discount code there as well. Also, I still have a bunch of stuff I'm trying to give away here. If you use my affiliate links, any of them in the description and discount code, shoot me an email of your order number and I will pay for the shipping and mail any of these items to your house. Just let me know which one you want. So I'm also currently editing the install video I have for the 6000 XP. I'm installing it and I'm testing it. I'll let you know what I think about that unit. I was able to get an unbalanced load, 7,000 watts on one leg. But if you want to watch that video, I'm going to put a link here at the end. But thanks a lot. See ya.